AEW certainly has generated a little buzz and a little excitement for themselves, and maybe more than a little bit of excitement, you know, for their hardcore loyal fan base, certainly created a lot of excitement with some of the things they've done recently, and obviously, most notably, especially, with their biggest talent acquisition, their biggest signing to date, CM Punk. And you just saw him debut Friday in the United Center in what is to date AEW's most attended show of any kind. You know, he's going to be in AEW. And he's throwing down the gauntlet, throwing down the challenge. His first match in AEW is going to happen at All Out on Saturday, September 5th, and he wants to take on Darby Allin. This is, this is a big deal for AEW. It's going to bring them attention. It's got more people interested, certainly. And my hope is, is that Tony Khan and the powers that be with AEW, most specifically though Tony Khan, can read the tea leaves here, can understand the location, the competition, the situation and come to the absolute right decision and that is that CM Punk versus Darby Allen must main event all out period take a look at the location first you have to understand where you're at all out is going to be in Chicago that's CM Punk's stomping grounds it's his hometown when you think about Chicago in terms of wrestling now Typically, the first name you think of is CM Punk. This matters significantly because you know going into that show and throughout that show, nobody is going to be more over, period. Like, even if you had Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson, debut on this show, he would be over and over big with that crowd, certainly. But in Chicago... That's CM Punk's face that runs that place. He will be the most over person, period. And while fans may care about other things and other matches and other wrestlers on that show, by comparison, they're not going to give a shit compared to CM Punk being at All Out. CM Punk wrestling his first match in seven and a half years his first match in AEW, the fans won't care about anything else nearly to that level. So you have to understand the location. And when I talk about competition, you got to understand that. And competition in this case is not anything WWE related. Is when you look at the other key players, key matches on the card. Kenny Omega versus Christian Cage is not a true main event title match for your pay-per-view. Especially when you're talking about a company like AEW that only does four or five of these jokers a year. It's not like you're talking about another place that runs a special event every three, four, five weeks. In that case, yeah, you could get by with Kenny Omega versus Christian Cage as a pay-per-view world title match. But when you've got a select number, you got to go with your biggest and your best and your baddest, so to speak, when it comes to those main events. Kenny Omega versus Christian Cage absolutely does not give you that vibe, does not give you that feeling. And you all know that. You may enjoy that match. You might look back at that match they had on the first episode of Rampage and say, hey, you know what? They could put on a banger and a classic at the pay-per-view. And I don't necessarily disagree with that. Christian Cage is a great opponent for Kenny Omega. He helps slow Kenny Omega down, which means Omega has to work. He actually works, not moves and bumps and flips and kicks and no-sells and false finishes bullshit, but actually has to work and tell a story. And he's so much better when he slows down and tells a damn story. But that doesn't mean it's main event of the pay-per-view worthy. Because you got to be realistic here. Nobody's going to think that Christian Cage is going to win it. And if you have Kenny Omega main event in this location, it's not going to send the people home very happy. It's not even the title match for Omega that fans would want to see the most. That would be Hangman Page or certainly now even a CM Punk. So you're going to put a Kenny Omega title match that's going to be second rate in terms of interest, in terms of appeal in your main event? Like, that's just stupid. You can't do that. And this whole notion that your world title needs to main event every pay-per-view, no, it doesn't. 
you still you seem to have fans sometimes that are stuck in that that the main the world title should always main event no the fuck it shouldn't no it absolutely should not your most important match your most notable match the match that drew the most money should be the one that goes on last in modern wrestling it absolutely should that's not this match you can put this world title match on semi main event fine nothing wrong with that but it's not main event worthy. And you're not main eventing anything that may happen between Jericho and MJF. Maybe you feel like the story is there, but the match quality certainly is not. I certainly would not put that higher on the card than Kenny Omega versus Christian Cage. Would you? I don't think so. But in reality, neither one of those that I mentioned stacks up to CM Punk versus Darby Allen, Because you have to understand and grasp the full gravity of the situation you're facing here. You just had your biggest moment to date in company history with CM Punk's debut on Rampage on Friday. His signing is the most important acquisition they've had to date. His debut, the most notable moment in company history. Can we all agree on that? I certainly hope to God we can. This is going to be his first pay-per-view and his first official wrestling match in over seven and a half years. Seven and a half years. Nothing, and I want to emphasize again, nothing is more important than this match. It's CM Punk, hasn't wrestled in seven and a half years. It's in his hometown. There's going to be a morbid curiosity about what CM Punk is going to look like. How is he going to do? Is he going to have ring rust? Like, is this going to be the CM Punk of old? That's going to matter, but the match quality isn't ultimately going to matter as much. Because you're featuring the most notable act in your company right now. That has to go on last. It has to. That's the match that everybody's going to be buzzing about. That's the match that everybody's going to be talking about. That's the match that everybody's going to want to see the most. And by putting it on in the main event, you could even work in some interviews during the show with CM Punk and Darby Allen. Like you could even have other people be asked about it. Like you could do so many things with it. Like just from a show flow and show structure standpoint, this absolutely makes the most sense. You could sit there and also talk about the fact that not only are you featuring your biggest star at the moment in CM Punk, in the main event, making a world of sense, especially in his first pay-per-view and first match in over seven and a half years. But it also elevates Darby Allen to another level of perspective for the fans. A lot of people are looking at Darby Allen as a future main eventer and a future world champion. Well, what better way to demonstrate to the fans that he is a future main eventer than to actually put him in a main event? And it's not like this is just something you randomly threw together. Like, on TV, you had CM Punk call out Darby Allen. Darby Allen accepts the challenge. That means that this was basically CM Punk's hand-picked opponent. You have to put that on last. It helps establish CM Punk. It legitimizes your main attraction in the main event of one of your biggest shows of the year. In what's going to be one of your hottest crowds of the year. It also helps elevate the guy that he works with instantly in terms of his perception and what you can do with him going forward. And also when you talk about show flow and show structure, fans will be so emotionally tapped during and after this match especially. Nothing else is going to be able to follow it. Nothing. And even if you think that you could, why would you risk it? Yeah, sometimes no risk it, no biscuit, but sometimes risk it equals dumb dickus. Don't do it. You don't want to sit there and put this like in the middle of the damn show because you're afraid, oh, maybe CM Punk will have ring rust and it won't look so good if that main events. People aren't going to really give much of a shit. Yeah, your hardcore nerd fans are certainly going to talk about it. On Twitter, will talk about how he looks and his performance. But if anything, you got to understand that a lot of those fans are going to be so rabidly excited to see CM Punk that even if he's not so great in the ring, they're going to pretend like he is because they're so caught up in the emotion of the moment of what's going on here. 
It's not going to matter. I come back to the match quality isn't going to matter as much because A, people are just going to be excited to see CM Punk wrestling again. B, they're going to be excited about CM Punk wrestling Darby Allen. It's not going to matter because if all else fails, they're going to be so caught up in CM Punk being there, they're not going to give much of a shit. They're not going to give it the same critical eye. You need the optics of your big signing, your biggest attraction, closing out this show. You need to build on the momentum and goodwill you have generated in recent weeks with some of the things you've done, some of the shows you've put out there, the CM Punk signing, his debut on Rampage, and you do that by having CM Punk win and closing out the show in his hometown by having him standing tall in the ring. That's how you do this. Now, if this was a WWE, I would absolutely 1,000% be concerned that they wouldn't just put this in the middle of the freaking show. Vince McMahon has a long, proud history of structuring his cards like a dumbass. Like, imagine looking at Hogan and Rock heading into WrestleMania 18 and saying, you know what, Triple H and Jericho's got a main event that one because it's for the world title. Nobody gave a fuck about that. It was Icon versus Icon. Ali Tyson type of shit. Hogan Rock was the main event. And guess what? Nothing could fucking follow it. Imagine having Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker at WrestleMania for the first time at WrestleMania 25 and putting it in the middle of the damn card. Because you got to get main event and other mania with God. Ugh. Guess what happened? The crowd was fucking tapped. Same shit happened at 24. You put Flair and Michaels in the middle of the damn card. Nothing was going to follow that. Nothing. That should have went on last. Edge and Taker in the main event tried to save it as best they could. But that was a match that everybody was talking about. So if we're talking about WWE, I'd be absolutely concerned. Especially with being Punk. Like when he was a 430 plus day damn champion... He was doing semi-main event duty to Cena in fucking people power. But my hope here is that Tony Khan has more logic and sense and basic understanding of the location, the competition on the card, the situation in the moment, and grasp that you don't want to screw up the flow and the structure of your show by trying to shoehorn this in somewhere in the middle. This has to go on last. Absolutely has to. No match will be better. And you say, well, I think this match will be... No match will be better because nobody will care about any other match on this card more than this one. Nobody will talk about a match more than this one. No match will get more attention than this one. No match will have the crowd more engaged than this one. No match will have more the crowd more emotionally invested than this one. For all these reasons that I've outlined and probably so many other that some of you can probably chime in with in the comments that I didn't even touch on for the sake of time, CM Punk versus Darby Allen must absolutely be the main event of All Out. And I hope Tony Khan is wise enough and sensible enough to read the room and understand this and go there. Because if you don't, it's going to take some of the shine off of it. Don't overthink it, do it right, and you'll be rewarded for it, I promise you.